on to um, Bruce. Bruce is going to um, uh, talk about exponential backoff and how you can optimize your scripts for for uh, when you hit them to rate limiting issues. So over to you, Bruce. So I'm going to talk about uh, rate limiting, which you've all come across in the course of using AppScript. It can be frustrating when it tells you you're doing things too quickly. So I'm going to talk about why that happens and strategies for, for getting around it. So first of all, this is what you see. Service invoked too many times in a short time. And the advice you get is to try sleeping between doing things, which is a pretty lousy piece of advice, but that's what it tells you what to do. Now, Google are not alone because almost every API that you might choose to use has got some kind of rate limiting going on. So first of all, you know, why, why do people do this? Well, you've probably seen this picture before. If you overload something it's not designed to take, then nobody goes anywhere. So APIs are designed um, thinking about what the maximum number of people that are going to be using it at any one time is going to be. And therefore the infrastructure that gets put in place and everything else is built with that in mind. So rate limits are built in usually at the beginning in order to make sure that the traffic that arrives at an API is what was expected to arrive. However, it's not, you know, when you, when you hear something like um, you can do one thing per second, now every API has got a different way of implementing that. There are as many different ways of implementing that as there are APIs. But uh, it, it's like this, a, a measurement window is the place over which the usage that someone's making of a resource is measured. So if something says I'm going to allow you to do one thing per second, it doesn't mean that every second it checks to see how many things you've done. More likely what it does is over a period of time, it checks how many times you've done that thing. And if it's more than it would like, it's, it, it fails and stops you doing it then. So, the, so that's why the idea of waiting a second between each time you do something is probably not the right approach, and we'll get to that in a moment. Facebook Graph, for example, API, me their measurement window is 15 minutes, even though they talk about the number of things that you can do per minute. So that's why every API under this covers is not exactly what it seems in terms of the documentation. So this is what um, Google tell you to do when, with that message, essentially. So this is accessing some service, and it's keeping on going while it's not finished doing that. And then it's a, the advice is process the result of your, of your access, and then sleep, and then try again. And the amount of time that they tell you to sleep would be equal to the, the rate at which you can do things in a second. So that's what this code would do, and that's what Google are advising that you do if you hit that rate limit message. But the problem with that is, is that if the window period is not a second, well, even if it is a second actually, but let's say it's not a second, then that means you're wasting a lot of time. If you look at this, this representation, which is showing 10 accesses to some resource, and they'll happen, they're, they take different amounts of time to both access the resource and also process the result of what you got back. Now, if you're following their advice, then in that 10 seconds with this kind of a, a pattern, you're sleeping a lot. And in fact, you're, if, you, if you have a, a loop that does 180 things, then that means you're going to spend half of your processing time of your script just weighing. So that doesn't seem like a great approach. It's kind of foolproof. You, you'll never break the, the quota that way. But at the same time, you're making everything take twice as long and you're potentially going to run out of processing time instead, which is probably even worse than having rate limit problems. So let's look at a, a different approach um, using something that's called exponential backoff. I'll go into that in a little bit more detail later on. So what you're doing here is that you're leveraging the measurement window being probably not a second. And the other thing that you're leveraging is that go, if we go back to the code here for a moment, processing the result takes a bit of time. So let's say that takes half a second. Then you're waiting an extra second that you didn't, an extra half a second you didn't have to. Because part of the time 
between accessing the service the next time will be how long the service took to access minus the time you took to process it. So you're leveraging both of those things, the measurement window being not necessarily the same as the published rate. And secondly, you're taking advantage of the fact that you did spend some time anyway between the last time that you called it. So using exponential back off, essentially what you do is you try it, and if it didn't work, you wait a bit and you try it again. And if it still didn't work, you wait a bit longer and you try it again. So this is the kind of pattern that you get with exponential back off. So what that means is that compared to up here, where you only managed to do five things in the time, here you can do nine things in the time. So let's talk about how that can be implemented. So, but first of all, let's think about exponential, what that even means. So the reason that you do that is because if you wait a fixed amount of time, then you're probably going to make the problem worse because you're still going to be in the window that you already failed in. So first of all, you wait for a little bit of time. And if that's not good enough, you wait for a longer amount of time, an exponentially longer amount of time, because you keep on wanting to be pushed into wherever the next window is measured from because you don't actually know where they're measured from. So this formula that we're looking at here would be how many time, how long you would sleep between uh, each attempt. So the, the attempts is the number attempt that we're on, the first time, the second time, the third time, and so on. The sleep for is the default amount of time to sleep. I think in my, my library I use 750 milliseconds for that, that by, by default. And then we add a little bit of a randomness to that. And the reason for that is because let's just say that you're measuring an API that you're accessing, you're measuring by user, but you're accessing from two different scripts at the same time. It's possible that you're going to get into some kind of a loop competing with each other um, because people, because they, they both access it at the same time and they both wait for the same amount of time and then they both access it at the same time and it fails. So adding some randomness to it simply means that you'll get out of those kind of race conditions. So that's what the formula looks like. And but first of all, you've got to identify whether an error is worth trying again. So each API has got a different way of telling you whether or not it failed because you broke a rate limit. So if you're using an external API, they might return an error code, usually 500, 503. And sometimes they don't fail, but they contain some message in the response instead. But in AppScript, and this might change, by the way, uh, Martin mentioned the error service at the beginning, and I'm hoping that this will give us a better way to identify the actual error that occurred. But anyway, that's, we'll look at that probably next month. But for the moment, you have to examine the, the, the text that you get back from AppScript. And so some of the ones that you get back that are worth trying again are these. There's about 20 of them or something like that. So using exponential back off, um, I do have a library that we'll talk about later on. This is my implementation of it. So now we change that loop that we were doing, doing the processing, to use exponential back off to take care of retrying all that formula we looked at and everything else. So now we're um, passing it a function of the thing we want it to do, which is the access to service piece. And then, if we, no, we don't have to wait here. There's no, no sleeping or waiting or anything like that because if there was any waiting to have been done, exponential backup would have taken care of it. So we can forget all about that problem if we just do it this way. So before we get to that, um, I do have, I actually wrote a, a, a rate limit in service this morning. So what this is, I know that AppScript has got plenty of, of um, rate limits already. You probably don't want any more, but this is your own rate limiting implemented in AppScript. It's pretty straightforward. I won't go through the code, I'll, but I'll distribute it later. But this is a, a rate limiting function. So I've got a test here and we'll run it. Well, I'll start running it whilst we're talking about it. So I'm starting off the rate limiter. The first time I'm trying to run 15 things. And by the way, the I'm saying here that I've got a window of 10 seconds and I'm allowing 10 things to happen. In other words, I've got a rate limit of one per second, just the same as you see in a lot of the Google, Google things. So the first time off, I'm going to run 15 things, so that should bust it for, the, for, for five of them. 
Next, I'm going to try sleeping. And that should bust it. And then I'm going to be using exponential back off and pretending that I've had the kind of error that you get from, from app script. And so this is the result. So what we saw there is that we run out of quota for the for the last five just as just as app script would. Don't forget this is a, a simulation of one that I've written. Um, and the sleeper method took 22 seconds. And then exponential back off, it noticed that it had to retry only twice out of that test that we just did, and it only took 12 seconds. So typically you're going to take half the time. It all really depends on how long your process takes. I've simulated one here of taking 400 milliseconds uh, in, all the, in all the cases. Then that's what you're really leveraging by using exponential back off, the time that you took to run the thing, and along with the size of the window. So typically you're going to, first of all, forget all about the fact that um, sometimes things fail because it'll take, call, it'll take care of them all. And then secondly, you'll be able to make sure that things get done twice as fast as they otherwise would. So as I said, the, every API has got a different way of telling you if it failed. So exponential back off that, that I've implemented here gives you two options, a number of options, two of which are to supply a different function to check what a retrialable error looks like. So for example, if you're using app script in, in a different language, then you might have to set up your own um, messages that app script sends back when you run out of run out of um, of core. Another way is this look ahead function. So what that means is that it hasn't actually failed because if you call some of the API, let's if you call the NASA API, for example, which is a, a really cool API if you haven't used it, by the way, it can access the moon lander camera and all sorts of stuff. But in any case, that has a, a rate limit, but it doesn't fail. It returns you a message in place of the results that says, hey, you know, you failed. So you have to potentially be able to look at a response before you decide whether or not it's worth trying again. So you can have a look ahead function that checks the response and it says, I'm going to retry it anyway um, because it wasn't an error, but it was a message from the API that it, you've run at a rate limit. So that's the, that's the kind of some, some of the options that you can do. And another use is waiting for stuff to become available. If you use the GitHub API, for example, then so if just look at this code very quickly, it's getting a, a repository from GitHub and if it isn't there, it's going to create. And that all works fine. It creates the repo. And then after that, you want to get the details from the repo. But the problem is that the API hasn't quite registered the fact that that repo exists back in GitHub somewhere. So it's, it, it doesn't find it. So even though it created it successfully, the other part of the API that gets the details didn't find it. So in that case, we have to put in a look ahead function here that says, if you didn't get any response, then wait a bit and try again. And eventually, GitHub will sort itself out, and then this will work properly. And finally, I think in, there's a few things in App Script that are async. There's hardly any, actually. But one of them is BigQuery. If you do a BigQuery uh, fetch, then you're going to get back uh, a response. But that response is not going to be the result of the query. It's going to be a, a thing that says whether or not the job is complete. And you have to wait. for. Usually what they say in the documentation is to keep on sleeping for a, for a minute, for a second or something until that job complete becomes true. But that's, that's a waste of seconds by, by spending time waiting for things that might not be a problem. So you can use exponential back off even for things like that and it'll take care of the retrying and everything else. Um, what's this? Oh, this is just an, the final example, which is this is an API that returns, that actually looks like it's not going to fail, but it actually returns funny response codes to describe the fact that they've had um, a, a failure of that rate limiting type. So we're just here, we're checking to see if the response code was any one of the things that say it's uh, it's worth retrying, and then it's retrying whatever API this is for. I can't remember. So that's kind of all I have there. Um, the code that I've showed you today, there's the the useful library, which is the one that contains 
exponential back off is available through this ID. Alternatively, you can get it off GitHub or, and play around with it and make it your own, whatever. And that rate limit implementation that I showed at the beginning, um, if you want to take a look at that or even implement your own rate limiter in your own web apps, or in fact, to get back to Steve's point, you could rate limit your um, unpaid for add-ons, for example, then that's where you'll find the code for that too. I think that's a re really clear explanation. I think the the measurement window thing is something, you know, a lot of people won't, you know, they'll just be going, oh yeah, I got to wait a second. And they're just given the constraints within that script with, you know, server time, you know, you, you're just killing time for no reason. Um, I suppose one of the things that we should really make clear is that, um, you know, we're talking about rate limiting here and, and there there are other quotas that you you could potentially still hit into, you know, with if you're using advanced services or, uh, well, not advanced services, if you're using other Google services and other APIs, your all fetch is going to come into the picture. Yeah, so uh, actually this is a big problem. I think that URL fetch does have rate limits, but not only does it have rate limits, it also has um, how many of them you can do in a day. Um, and so that means you let your double hit usually because if you're using URL fetch, you're probably using an API, um, and that API itself may have rate limits. So you've got rate limits going on all over the place. It's quite hard to, to manage. And the problem, one of the problems is that the URL fetch quotas haven't been upgraded in the past, I don't know how many years. So what that means is that we're getting all these brilliant APIs coming along that Google keep throwing at us to use, and we're not seeing any um, opportunity to use them because we don't have enough quota. Every day I run out of URL fetch quota. So there is a place to report issues, by the way, um, and it's here. Um, this, this place here, code.google.com, whatever that URL is, we'll, we'll distribute it later on, um, shows all the things that are problems with with uh, App Script, either whether it's a, an enhancement request or whether it's a, an actual bug, and you can report stuff on here. And the way that they choose what they're going to work on is how many times something has been stored. So if you think this is an important issue, then you star it. So this particular one that we're looking at is one I reported a while ago saying that URL fetch is just you know, fairly useless nowadays. So you can all star this if you want to get more core or get them to look at it in any case. Um, I was just going to make another comment too. Um, you hinted at it, especially with add-ons that a lot of people are going to use and they expect quality because Google products are typically good quality products with rare exceptions of downtime and so forth. So it's natural that the expectation is for the third-party developers. So that's why one of my strategies is also to leverage exponential backoff wherever I can. <laughs> you plan for the worst and hope for the best sort of thing. So thank you yeah. for sharing that code because uh, you've had previous versions of that that I have leveraged. So thanks. Okay. I'd like to, um, to to thank you for, for coming. Hopefully you've found this, um, this show useful. We'll um, be back. Uh, next month sometime we've, um, we've we've actually got a long list of things to follow up it might be a two-hour show <laughs> I, but anyway i would like to um thank bruce and steve uh and spencer for uh, their contributions as well just to say this is a community show so we, we are completely open to people if you've got something you want to show even if it's a problem you want to to put to uh, some of the experts we've got in our community and ask them, you know, on the show, how, how would you solve this? We're more than happy to take that challenge on, he says, <laughs> on behalf of other people mostly. Um, and also, we're always looking for your feedback uh, about the show. So thanks for the people that have posted comments on our YouTube channel uh, on the uh, Totally Unscripted page. So thanks again, and uh, we'll see you next month sometime.